You've drawn a great logo, but there's only one problem. It's on paper. I'll show you how to digitize it and vectorize it with Photoshop and Illustrator. If you're serious about creating a great logo, then you need to make sure that it's vectorized. If you create your logo in software like Illustrator, instead of it being made out of pixels, it'll be made out of vectors, which means it can scale up or down to any size without ever losing quality. In this video, we're gonna take a sketch, put it through Photoshop to clean it up, and then put it into Illustrator and use the live trace function to vectorize it. Let's get started. Here is the sketch we will be using for this video. It's not mine, it's one off Google Images, and I think it's pretty typical of the type of thing that you'd wanna digitize using this process. You can see that although the lines around the outside have been darkened, there's still a lot of loose lines and cleaning up needed before you can consider it looking crisp and professional. Let's start by bringing this into Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is address our black and white balance. To do that, we're going to come up to Image, Adjustments, and then Curves. You can manually change the line with your mouse, but I find it for something like this much easier to use the eyedroppers. We're going to click on the black one and then find the blackest portion of the image and then click there. Now we're going to come to the white one and we're going to click on something, not necessarily the widest portion, but something that we want to be quite bright. So for instance, this faded line here might be a good one to click. You can see that it's increased the contrast and it's actually cleaned up some of these areas here. Let's toggle the preview so we can see. We're going to OK that and now we're going to zoom in and have a quick go with our white paintbrush hard edge brush and we'll use the left square bracket on the keyboard to shrink this down quickly. This is not essential, you can probably skip it if you're tight for time, but if you want the absolute best result this will help with things later on in Illustrator. We're simply going to come through and brush away any of these stroke marks that aren't obviously part of our logo. All right, a couple of minutes invested there has cleaned it up a great deal. So I think at this point, we're ready to paste it into Illustrator. Just before we do, however, let's do a quick demonstration of the fact that Photoshop is in fact raster or pixel based. Once we zoom in here, we'll see that very quickly the image turns to pixels and it's quite unusable. If you were to try and blow this up onto a poster or anything that required high quality, it's gonna look like this and your logo and therefore your brand is gonna be portrayed really badly. Okay, we've pasted the two logos side by side. The one on the left is the one that we've just cleaned up in Photoshop, and the one on the right is the original unedited version. Just to show you that Illustrator doesn't magically fix everything, if we zoom in, we still get the same pixelation. So the next steps are very important in vectorizing and getting our logo to something really clean and really professional. We're gonna do these logos one at a time, and the first thing we're gonna do is click on it and then come up to Image Trace. Instead of clicking the button immediately, we're going to hit the little drop down and we're going to pick the one that says black and white logo. Immediately, Illustrator has gone around and traced and tried to clean up our logo. You can see a little bit of detail and shape has been lost, but fortunately there's a way to edit what it's doing and try and get the settings just how we need them. You notice this whole panel has switched to controls for image tracing. What we need to do is hit the little dialog button here. This will bring up the image trace panel and here we have a lot more control over what's happening. Since we do have a black and white logo, we're gonna leave the preset on black and white, but just so you know, there is grayscale and color. The main thing we need to do to address our loss of detail is to open the advanced tab. This brings up a number of different sliders, and this is the point where you're gonna experiment with sliding each of them back and forth to see the effect it has on the output. The most important one is our threshold here. Dragging it to the left tells Illustrator that we want it to pick up only the stronger colors, and dragging it to the right tells that we want to pick up more little details. Other things to try are our path fitting. So you can see here the tooltip is saying a high value means a tighter fit. Let's drag it down and see what that does. You can notice here that it's squared it off and pointed this corner too, which means when we bring it up to the top that we get more curves preserved in our logo. Next one is corner emphasis. So we can see that higher means more corners. So if we put it down to the bottom, it rounds everything off. So if you want your logo to remain sharp, you need to have that nice and high. 
Our last one that's worth playing with is our noise slider. This is good for weeding out all of the little details that we don't want to get picked up. So this is gonna be essential on our original logo and we can tell it to ignore all of these small things here. That's why we have a pixel measurement here. If we put it right down to one pixel, it's gonna pick up lots of little artifacts and by sliding it up, it's gonna ignore those little details and it's up to you to slide it back and forth until you find just the right balance. You can see here that I lost my center white portion because it must have been smaller than 89 pixels. So I'm actually going to slide this back a little bit until it reappears. One last thing that's worth experimenting with is the ignore white button. When we tick that, it doesn't look like much has changed, but it means we won't end up with a white box around the logo. It's going to essentially make all of these bits hollow. I'm going to leave it unticked because I want to be able to color these center portions and then I'm going to close the window. All right, let's have a go at the second one. We're going to do the exact same thing. Hopefully it works almost as well. We're going to come to image trace. We're going to go to black and white logo, and then we're going to open the panel, move it out of the way and play with our levels until we're happy with the logo. You can see immediately that our lack of cleaning up has introduced some artifacts around the logo. If that's the style you're going for, that's fine but in this tutorial, we're going for a much cleaner version of the logo. It's clear that the time we put in in Photoshop for this one has paid off compared to our raw version on this side. You can see we're still stuck with these no matter how much we up some of these values. So let's leave it like that, close it and continue. It doesn't matter what tool we select here, we won't be able to directly edit the vectors until we complete one more step. So let's do that now. We're going to select with the normal black cursor tool and then next to tracing result, we're going to click expand. You can see here that all of a sudden, all of the vectors are being made available to us. After it's expanded, everything by default will be grouped, which means if we want to edit it, we have to double click to get inside. Then we can get to the various components. I find that particularly annoying. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to click on it and come to object ungroup. Let's explore an anomaly here, which unless you get right, could really frustrate you. You'll notice if I come and color one of these, if I try to edit it by changing the shape, it still has a white outline behind. That's because the black section has not been made solid black behind, but it's been made to have holes in it. And then the other section is on top of that. I'm going to undo a few steps and show you how to avoid that. Okay, we're back before we expanded. So let's come back to our panel and you'll notice this little button here that says method. We had it on abutting by default, which creates cutout paths. If we change it to overlapping, you can see it says it's gonna create stacked paths. So let's save that, trace it again, close the box and expand and ungroup. First thing we're gonna do is delete this outer box. And now let's try and change the color of something and drag it away and you can see it's solid black underneath so depending on the type of logo you're doing it might be an advantage to leave it on the default mode but most of the time you're going to want to get that feature correct otherwise every time you try and edit one of these top shapes it's going to leave an ugly white hole behind now comes a pretty tedious part and that means coming in with the white cursor tool and cleaning up some of these bumps so i'm going to zoom right in already we can see that this is vectorized and it won't pixelate no matter how close i go I'm going to move the camera around and now I'm going to select one of these paths. You'll notice the two handles come up. And what I can do is drag and move these around and manipulate the handles until it starts to smooth out a great deal. You can see that to do all of this, it's going to take quite a long amount of time. So it really pays to try and do a neat sketch in the first place where possible. There is one shortcut that may work for you if you're trying to avoid doing all of this manually. And to do that, we need to select our object, come to object, path, and then simplify. Make sure preview is ticked, otherwise you won't be able to see what's happening. But basically we have these two sliders here and changing them controls how much that it's simplified. That one's pretty good. We've still got our bump here, so let's try and play with the angle threshold. I 
think that's quite an improvement even though it didn't get rid of this bump. Perhaps it saved me some time elsewhere cleaning things up. You'll notice that it's reduced it from 13 to 9 points and that refers to the little blue dots around the outside that are making up the vector path. By reducing this number it means when we come in to edit there's less points to have to manipulate by hand so it might be a worthwhile investment of time for you. Now I'm going to quickly go through and apply some colour here just to jazz it up. One of the option with your logo is to apply some gradients. So we start with that by clicking on one of the existing shapes and then probably the quickest way is to select one of the gradients from the side here. Then we'll come up and make sure we have gradients showing and then we can use the tools here to manipulate that. So the obvious ones would be changing the angle. And then of course the colors. So this one I might like to make quite a bit redder. And the other side probably a little bit more orange. And remember you don't have to do this every time. Anytime you're happy with the gradient that you've made, you can click and drag it over to the swatches and it will be saved for later. So now if I want to apply it to one of these other surfaces, I do a simple one click and the most I should have to change is my angle. Well that pretty much wraps it up. It's up to you how neat you can get the starting drawing to avoid these lumps and then how much time you want to spend on Illustrator afterwards cleaning them up and getting them crisp. One thing's for sure that saved a lot of time compared to doing this menu with the pen tool and as promised your logo will be more professional because no matter how far we zoom in it will never pixelate because it's now converted to vectors. This means that you could blow it up to the size of a billboard or cover an entire side of a building and it will never lose quality. So it's exactly what print houses are looking for when they expect to receive a professional graphic for your logo. So that is how you vectorize your logo. This just covers the basic process. It doesn't teach you how to design a great logo. We'll cover that in a future video. Bye bye. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.